Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wade's Movie World, and happy October 2019 to all of you out there. So, to start off the month of October, I thought I would do a video or a little podcast recording where I rank all the movies in the Halloween series. So, that's what this video is going to be all about. So, I will start off with the absolute worst one at number 11, and I will work my way up to the absolute best film of the series at number 1. And just a quick heads up, this is going to be a long video, so before we get into it, go ahead and pause the video and go get yourself something to eat, like some popcorn or candy or nachos, or hell, go to Taco Bell and go get you some dollar menu, then come back and join me in this video. Also, go get yourself something to drink, some water, some Dr. Pepper, Coke, lemonade, iced tea, or get yourself a little something stronger, like something with some alcohol in it or something like that. Just please don't drink and drive, or please don't text and drive. So, now remember, uh, these are my own opinions of how I rank each film in the series. And hey, if this is not the way you see it, we're all different and we all have our favorites as far as our likes and dislikes of these films. So, with all of that being said, let's dive into the awesomeness, which is the Halloween franchise. So, here we go. Coming in as the worst film of the series at number 11 is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Now, my reasons for this being the absolute worst film in the franchise is because it has nothing to do with Michael Myers, Laurie Strode, or Dr. Sam Lemus, from which, the Hall from which Halloween and Halloween 2 was established. This film should just be called Season of the Witch or some other title but it should not even be associated with Michael Myers, the Halloween universe, which has already been established. So, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch is the worst one, and it comes in at number 11. Number 10 on my list is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's Halloween sequel had so much potential and could have gone in any direction. But instead, Zombie decided to use this film to butcher and destroy everything about what Halloween, Michael Myers, Laurie Strode, and Dr. Loomis were in his first film and in the original films. I mean, he turned Laurie basically into a girl who is literally going insane and who has lost what once made everything that made her what she was, and now... All that's gone. She hangs out with bad crowds. She drinks. She cusses. Uh, she even cussed out her own therapist. And she is now a girl who wallows in self-pity and self-destruction. Zombie then turned Dr. Loomis into a self-righteous, pardon my language, dick. So in this film, after what happened in Rob Zombie's first Halloween, Dr. Loomis is on a book tour promoting his latest book about Michael Myers and treats his assistant and publicist like, like absolute garbage. Michael has turned into a long-haired hermit hillbilly who lives out in the woods for two years after the events of the first Rob Zombie Halloween movie. He is now having visions of his mother and following her will as she walks around looking like a ghost angel with too much eyeshadow and has a white stallion horse for a pet. So as far as the score and the music goes uh, for this film, the music with lyrics was horrible and the score music was okay. But to be honest, I don't even remember the Halloween theme even being used in this film. And that I can't really wrap my head around because this is a Halloween movie. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, at least use it once, maybe twice at, at the most. The whole movie is really an absolute mess with weird visuals and sequences and scenes that at times make you wonder what the hell you're watching. Now, I will say that the trailer for this film made it look absolutely amazing. But in reality, the film itself is a big pile of shit. I mean, it's just, it's it's a huge mess. And I just, I don't understand what, what he was thinking for this film. The only two positives of this movie has is the hospital dream sequence, which was a really good sequence and is the only good sequence in this film and Brad Dorff returning as Sheriff Brackett. 
other than that, this movie just all around sucks. Also, in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, there's another sequence or scene that is not so bad and that works okay in the film and one of the only scenes I could stand. And that was the first visit that Laurie Strode made to her therapist, Dr. Barbara Collier, who is played by Superman's love interest from the movies, Margot Kidder. And I thought it was a great scene and it was one of the ones that I could actually stand to sit through. So that's also another positive for this movie. But other than that, this movie is just trash. I don't know, I just, I, I wake up and I, I feel like I can't even breathe. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be getting worse. I'm, I'm concerned, but uh, gosh, I can't say that I'm surprised. I mean, it's Halloween, and Halloween is a big trigger point for you, isn't it? Barbara, I know Michael Myers is dead. I shot him in the fucking head. I know he's not gonna come back just because of some stupid holiday. Lori, they never found his body. So? So it's very hard for you to get closure on this. I mean, he's objectively dead, but he's living in your mind and he's living in your heart and your emotions. So that's the reality that we have to heal you from, which is why I say you're still in recovery. So basically, I just have to wait until my brain heals. <laughs> well, let's, let's try and help your brain heal a little bit today, okay? Okay. Okay. How's your relationship with Annie going? Annie? Yeah. Um, I am not good. Hmm. I don't know, I feel kind of shitty by saying this, but she's a constant reminder. Every time I see her face and I see those scars, I know that it's my fault. And, and, oh. I, and I get I get angry, and there's something in my body that that snaps, and I get this zero to a hundred rage, and I just want to go up to her, and I just want to fuck it. Okay, finish the thought. Finish, finish that thought. It's really important. No, I'd rather not. Uh, you'll send me away. Oh, I would never send you away. We're here to keep you out of the hospital. The last place you're going to heal is in a hospital. What is that? That? That's whatever you think it is, is what that is. The theory is that this ambiguous stimuli here will bring your subconscious thoughts into the light and illuminate them. So what do you see? Um, white horse? Uh -uh. So what does that tell you? Am I crazy or seeing? Tells me you're a girl who likes white horses. Coming in at the number nine spot is Halloween Resurrection. So the overall story about Michael Myers returning home to Haddonfield from his trip to California in Halloween H2O was good, I thought. However, the execution of this film was horrible, which is sad because it was directed by Rick Rosenthal, who was the director or sort of the director of Halloween 2 from 1981. First, they tell and show us the lame and stupid backstory of how Michael Myers survives the events of Halloween H2O and what eventually happens to Laurie Strode. Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, comes back to her iconic character for just a couple of scenes, and then the filmmakers literally just throw her away or throw the character of Laurie Strode away without her fighting and going out in epic style. They just have Michael stabbing her in the back and then dropping her from the roof of the mental facility, which she's currently being held, which ends in her death. So to me, it's like the filmmakers just said about Laurie Strode and Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, we're just going to use you here. We don't want you anymore. Go away. And she's like the backbone besides Michael of the Halloween films. I mean, uh, Laurie Strode, she's this, she's been the main protagonist for, 
you know, several films now. And that's just, I just can't believe they did that. So let's talk about some other parts of this film. The cast, in my opinion, was absolutely horrible. The acting was atrocious, and that's not even the worst part. The second part of the plot was disastrous with the whole danger tainment survivor Big Brother premise with the whole group of several kids doing a webcam adventure in the home of the most notorious serial killer in the nation, that of course being Michael Myers. The whole thing was just stupid and ahead of its time, in my opinion. And then we have the icing on the cake, which is Busta Rhymes, who is the worst part of this film. He literally talks smack to Michael Myers. And then at the end, he tries to fight Michael Myers using Kung, Kung Fu, which looks like he doesn't even really know. It's just stupid and it's, and it's irritating. The only other thing that makes this movie okay is the score music by Danny Lux. He does a new and interesting take on the iconic Halloween theme, and it works. In spot number eight, we have Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. This film was quickly put into production by the filmmakers trying to cash off the success that Halloween 4 had. And that was the first of many problems. The director, Dominic Othenan Gerard, was not very knowledgeable about the Halloween franchise. He co-wrote the final script, which was used for filming. The original first draft of the script was written by Shim Bitterman. Bitterman's idea was that Jamie Lloyd, the little girl from the Halloween 4 movie, would become evil after stabbing her stepmother, which happens at the end of Halloween 4, while the shape goes after her. This idea was rejected by the studio and the Akkads, who brought in Michael Jacobs to write the script. After reviewing the script, director of Director Dominic Alton and Gerard added some new aspects like Jamie's inability to speak and her visions. Veteran actor Donald Pleasance had disagreements with Akkad and Alton and Gerard, citing that Jamie should have been portrayed as all evil after stabbing her stepmother. Akkad disagreed, thinking that the fans wanted to see more of Michael Myers, the shape. Which is true. I mean, I don't. <sighs> I think fans would want to see more of Michael, at least I would. But, I mean, it would have been interesting to see w what would have happened if Jamie had kind of become a killer as well, like maybe Michael's a sidekick or something like that. But uh, after watching it and then reviewing it and then thinking about it a lot, I'm kind of glad they didn't go that direction. I mean... This film could have been better in many ways, but I'm kind of glad they didn't go that direction. Um, but anyway, let's keep going. In an interview, uh, Danielle Harris, who plays Jamie Lloyd, explained what she thought of the idea. And Harris said, the way Halloween 4 ended, I thought I was going to be the killer. I thought it would have been fun to come back as the killer or Michael's sidekick. Scary, but fun. Best things about this movie were some of the killing and chase sequences in the barn at the farm and in the tree orchard. Also, the fact that we got to see some beloved characters again from Halloween 4, such as, of course, Dr. Loomis, Rachel Crothers, Jamie Lloyd, and Sheriff Ben Meeker. I was hoping we would get to see uh, Wade again from Halloween 4, and Wade is the character who tries to ask out Sheriff uh, Meeker's daughter, uh, Kelly Meeker, this happens in Halloween 4, and she turns to him and says, Fuck off, Wade. <laughs> it's one of my favorite scenes in Halloween 4. Uh, the opening title sequence of the movie with the pumpkin stabbing and, and carving was really amazing. I just wish they would have used a better version of the Halloween theme. I mean, the theme that they used, I mean, it is the Halloween theme, but I just wish a better version of it would have been used. I didn't really like care for the version that, that ended up in the final cut of the film. One thing I did like about this film, I thought the puppy love scenes between Little Billy, Little Billy and Little Jamie were so cute. Uh, the end battle between Michael Myers and Dr. Loomis beating Michael with a huge two-by-four piece of wood while he is caught in a chain net screaming, Die! Die, Michael! Die! That was free, freaking epic. I I mean, I don't care what you say. That, that was just epic. Um... So, yeah, that's one of the good things about the film. So let's talk about some of the worst things about this film. The whole mysterious man in black with the um, black silver-toed boots 
was just dumb and it was stupid and it served no no purpose except to break out Michael Myers uh, out of jail again at the very end. Then there were the two bumbling cops, deputies Nick and Tom, with their own clown theme. And my gosh, these guys were so annoying and they did nothing useful in the film. Then there was the thing to top this film off as the worst thing in this film. Or should I say the worst person in the film? And that was the annoying loudmouth girl named Tina. I mean, my gosh, she was just so unlikable and so annoying. And I was so glad when Michael killed her. And I remember the first several times I saw that movie, I, I never did say it. But then after a while, I watched it again and I was like, finally, someone shut her up already. <laughs> so, uh the musical score was done by Alan Howarth, and uh, he did a good job on the music with this film. Uh, he could have done better with the original theme, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, and you get what you get. So, number seven, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. As its title suggests, the film marks the return of Michael Myers after his absence from the previous installment, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Initially, John Carpenter and co-producer Deborah Hill retired the Michael Myers storyline after the second installment of the series, intending to do a feature new Halloween season-related plot, every sequel of which Halloween 3 would be the first. Halloween 4 was originally intended to be a ghost story. However, due to the disappointing financial performance of the third film, Halloween 4 reintroduced Michael Myers where he has stayed for the remainder of the film series. The musical score for this one was, of course, done by Alan Howarth, using uh, musical cues from John Carpenter for the theme and uh, some other music from the first and second movie. Halloween 4 came out in 19, 1988. It was directed by Dwight H. Little, and it was written by Alan B. McElroy. It starred Donald Pleasance, Ellie Cornell, Bo Starr, and Danielle Harris. The fourth installment in the Halloween film series, it focuses on Michael Myers returning to Haddonfield to kill his niece, Jamie Lloyd, who's played by Danielle Harris. And she is the daughter of Laurie Strode, with his former psychiatrist, Dr. Sam Lemus, once more pursuing him. So all in all, the film's story is solid. The look, the production design, the way it was filmed, the acting was rock solid. So. Everything in this film was really, really good. Just solid as a rock, as I said. One thing they should have shown was the police station being ravaged by Michael Myers. Um, I, I don't know if that was ever shot. If it was, they ought to do a, a director's cut version and put that sequence or that scene back, back in the film because that's something I would love to see. I loved the guys from the bar who took it upon themselves to go through town to hunt Michael down and try and kill him since the police had been wiped out. The new sheriff, Ben Meeker, who was played by Bo Star, was awesome. I really liked this sheriff. I liked him a heck of a lot better than Charles Cyphers' sheriff, <coughs> sheriff Brackett from Halloween and Halloween 2. Sheriff Meeker was just an all-around badass. Uh, there are some awesome action scenes and sequences in this film. There were some genuine scares in the movie and not just jump scares. One of my favorite moments comes early in the film at the discount mart uh, when Wade tries to ask out Sheriff Meeker's daughter, Kelly Meeker, and she turns to him and says, fuck off, Wade. <laughs> um, the only problem with this film was with the mask. The movie poster shows Michael Myers wearing the original Shatner mold mask, but in the film, it's not that mask that he's wearing. The mask that's used in the film looks like a bad Party City mask or the face of Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. So, and that's not the only issues they had with the mask. Then there was a scene that was filmed inside the elementary school where they used a mask that had not been painted and the hair had not been dyed and it looks like an old man with a pink face that is something they should have went back and reshot but what's difficult to understand about that is that no one noticed the mask 
I mean, how do you not notice it? You're making a Michael Myers Halloween film. The mask is one of the most important things in the film. Because if the mask is not done right, then the film doesn't work. But everything else about this film is pretty much spot on. This is one I really enjoy. Hey, Wade, why don't you go ahead and make your move? Don't rush me, Brady. Timing's got to be primo. Yeah, well, money talks and bullshit walks, you know what I mean? Tell her nothing, you don't ask Kelly out. All right, ten bucks, let's see it. He's not going to do it. Chicken. Don't forget, man, she's Sheriff Meeker's daughter. Her daddy don't scare me. Off, Wade. <laughs> At number six is Rob Zombie's Halloween. This film is a remake of the original movie that came out in 2007. It was written, directed, and produced by Rob Zombie. This is a modern retelling of John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. Though they don't copy the original film shot for shot, they do bring a lot of new and fresh things and ideas to this film. It is a very good retelling of the original story, but the film also has its share of problems. So the, the way the film looks and the way it was shot was really, really good. And I loved all the new takes on the classic characters. <clears throat> I thought that Scout Taylor Compton was very good and very likable as Laurie Strode, though she was not as quiet or shy as Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode was. Uh, I still say that Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode is the best one. Danielle Harris returns to the series, uh, playing Laurie's best friend, Annie Brackett. Tyler Maine was a, an amazing and yet very tall Michael Myers. His tallness made Michael all the more menacing and scary. Malcolm McDowell was great as Dr. Loomis. He really brought his own thing to it. But Donald Pleasance is still the best Dr. Loomis there is. Brad Dorif, who we all know as the voice of Chucky, the doll from Child's Play, did an excellent job as Sheriff Brackett. I would say that this Sheriff Brackett is better than the original one played by Charles Cyphers in John Carpenter's Halloween. I mean, he just, he knocked it out of the park with his Sheriff Brackett. One thing that was cool when Michael was still a child and uh, it was the scene where he was murdering his older sister, Judith, is he had a clown mask and costume on, but he took off the clown mask and put on the white-faced mask, which he would wear as an adult. And um, I'm not going to tell you how he already has that mask. If you haven't seen the film, go watch it. Um, but if you have, then you already know how he already has the uh, the mask that we're all used to. The musical score for this film is really good. It was done by Tyler Bates. Uh, the music with, with lyrics could have been left out. Um, I didn't think the film needed music with lyrics in it. Um, let's talk about some things that could have been left out or could have been toned down a little bit and stuff like that. Uh, the cursing in this film, it could have been toned down quite a bit. There's a lot, and I mean a lot of cursing in this movie. I did not like the backstory for Michael because what made Michael so scary in the original was the fact that he had no backstory. He just, one night, just, he just, something clicked in his brain and made him go mad. And that's really all we know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a mystery and that makes it all the more creepy. Um, this was not, uh, what I'm fixing to talk about, this was not in the theatrical version, but it's on the director's cut DVD. It was a rape scene that was shot and put into the director's cut version where two guards at the mental institution where Michael is a patient uh, end up raping a young female patient. And I'm glad this scene did not make it into the theatrical cut because 
I don't know what Rob Zombie was thinking, but the, Halloween did not need that. And that's something that I don't want to see a person get raped. I mean, you know, that's that's ridiculous. Um, and I will never own the, the director's cut of this movie because of that reason. Uh, the white trash family background should have been left out. The only thing I liked about Michael's childhood backstory was the relationship he had with his mom. Um, I thought their connection was really, really good and really, really strong. And you could tell that uh, through the performances that they really, really loved each other. If I had to compare this to the original 1978 John Carpenter Halloween, that film, John Carpenter's film, still beats this one by a long shot. Uh, but this is an okay film, uh, uh, like I said, a good retelling of the original story. Number five, we have Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. This is one of the better films in the Halloween franchise. This film picks, picks up six years after Halloween 5. This film is directed by Joe Chappelle. The music score is great. The score is done by Alan Halworth and Paul Rabiones. The Halloween theme is sped up and is has a uh, kind of a techno twist to it, which I think works amazingly well in this film. This film is about Michael Myers, and it explores his connections to a very mysterious satanic cult called the Cult of Thorn. This film is fun to watch because we have, of course, Michael Myers back, along with Dr. Samuel Loomis, played by the great Donald Pleasance once again. We have some new characters, which are the relatives of Lori Strodes, um, and of course the Strodes are her adoptive family, and they are living in the Myers house in Haddonfield. We also have the return of Tommy Doyle, played by Ant-Man himself, Paul Rudd. This was actually Paul Rudd's uh, first film. He played Tommy Doyle very well. He played like a psychologically damaged version of the boy we knew from 1978 that Laurie Strode was babysitting, and man, I, you know, I know it was his first film, but I, I say he should have won an Oscar for that. I mean, that his performance was just absolutely incredible in this film. I, that's one of the things that just makes this film work. There are some characters that are just not very bright and kind of annoying, but the overall story of this movie is really good, and it's pretty solid. Of course, they had to bring back the mysterious Man in Black, which that should have never been a thing in Halloween 5 to begin with, and we learn who he is and what his intentions are. We also get to see what happened to Jamie Lloyd, who disappeared that Halloween night at the end of Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. She's now a teenager, and she's got uh, some new stuff going on with her. In case you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil that for you. This movie and Halloween 5 have a similar ending with Michael being beaten. Of course, you know, in Halloween 5, he's being beaten by Dr. Loomis with a 2x4. And in Halloween 6, he's beaten, being beaten up by uh, Tommy Doyle with a steel pipe. And that was just quite amazing to watch. Uh, so this is one of the better films of the series, one I really enjoy watching a lot. You know, I can't say enough about this film. It does have problems, but I mean, not to the degree that... A lot of the other ones that I've already discussed have. Um, it's it's watchable and um, it's it's fun to watch. So, yeah. At the number four spot is Halloween 2. This movie is, the, I guess you could say, the first sequel to John Carpenter's Halloween in the franchise. Uh, it is written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill and was directed by Rick Rosenthal. But John Carpenter somewhat took over directing duties after a while. The film was released in 1981 and picks up at the exact moment John Carpenter's Halloween ended. So the events of this film are happening on the same night, just at a later time and at different locations. It is still October 31st, 1978, Halloween night. The score is done by John Carpenter and Alan Halworth, and this version of the music and the score has uh, more synthesizer sounds in it than the original score did, uh, which to me made it all the more creepier. I remember when I first saw this film, I was just like, what have they done to the to the music, to the score? But then the more I watched this film, the, the better 
the better the theme and the music becomes, even with the synthesizer sounds to it. This film is a great sequel, and we learn more about Michael Myers and Laurie Strode and why things are happening and why he's after her. Dr. Loomis, played by, of course, once again, the great Donald Pleasance, is amazing in all the movies, but in this one, he was just freaking amazing. Uh, I think out of all the films, this this was probably the one where he takes his performance performance to the the tip top. Um, this uh, this film, he was just he was great. Uh, this movie is very creepy, with Michael Myers stalking and killing patients and staff in a very dark and desolate Haddonfield Memorial Hospital. Uh, the movie is way more bloodier than the original film was. I mean, it's not over bloody, but I mean, it, it has blood in it. If you've ever noticed in the original Halloween, there's almost an absence of blood. I mean, yeah, there's blood maybe here or there, but then that's it. I mean, it's, uh, as uh, Erwin Yablon said, who was executive producer on these two films, don't show them blood and gore, don't give it to them. Theater of the mind. He's right. And that, that formula would, would work today. There are some things that could be better or taken out or shortened up in this film, but this is a very worthy sequel to the original. I used to not enjoying I used to not enjoy watching it as much as I do today. Um, it's it's grown on me quite a bit, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a very worthy sequel. I, I enjoy it for what it is. Number three, Halloween 2018. This film came out this past October 2018, and in this new film. We are on a new timeline, and it's supposed to be a direct sequel to John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween. This film was directed by David Gordon Green, and it was written by David Gordon Green and Danny McBride. Jamie Lee Curtis returns as Laurie Strode. The film also stars Will Patton as Sheriff Frank Hawkins, Virginia Gardner, Andy Matichek, and Judy Greer. Also, this Halloween movie brings back the original actor who played Michael Myers in the first film, Nick Castle, and also a new Michael Myers actor in James Jude Courtney. The musical score for this film is an updated version of what we already know and love, and it is done by John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter, and Daniel Davies. So the film takes place 40 years after the very first Halloween movie. This film is ultim ultimately about trauma, and it deals with Laurie not being able to move on after all the years that have passed since the first attack by Michael Myers in 1978. She is very gun and weapon savvy. She is so certain that Michael, again, will escape and she will this time be ready to kill him and end it. She has a strained relationship with her daughter and granddaughter. And uh, just every, everything about this, she's basically just a closed off, off person. And that's why she has such strained relationships. And you find out more about her background in the film. This film shows Michael back in Smith's Grove, uh, Warren County Sanitarium, and he's pretty much the way he was before he escaped the first time in 1978. But once he does, this film really takes off. One of the great things about the movie is it explains some things about the first film that were never shown or probably never even filmed, uh, but they're explained. And even though we don't see these things or see them in flashbacks, it's something that it makes sense and it works. A lot of the killing sequences are just amazing and scary. Then the sequence where Michael finally gets back to Haddonfield, where it's nightfall and all the trick-or-treaters are out. Michael's just basically walking around killing random people. And that was just crazy, but yet awesome at the same time. The babysitter sequences uh, with Vicky and the little kid named Julian, uh, who she is babysitting, were so amazingly done and, and, and done in a way that, that's creepy. And, you know, it, it just makes you think, you know, you need to check all the closets in your house. I mean, this film does things right. I mean, yeah, it does have its problems. And there are some things that should not have been in the film or could have been done differently. The one thing I did not like about this film was the insane, crazy doctor from Smith's Grove, Dr. Ranbir Sartain. I just didn't like his character. We didn't need his character through that whole portion of, of the film that we got. I thought his character could have stopped at a certain point. 
and then the movie just take off from there. Another thing I could have done without was the relationship drama and the Halloween dance at Haddonfield High School. Uh, that was just pointless to me, and it kind of took away from what the movie was really about and what was going on. There was another character that I thought got a bad deal, and he should not have died the way he died or, or when he died, and that's Sheriff uh, Frank Hawkins. I was hoping he would go out in an epic fight or showdown with Michael, or at least be in the next film and then get killed off somehow there. Hollywood didn't ask me, so. The one character who really just did not have a place in the film to me was Ray, Laurie Strode's son-in-law, Karen's husband, and Allison's father. It's just, I don't know, I just thought his character was un unuseful, I guess, and, and not very all, not all that smart. The rest of the film was flat out amazing. The great thing about this film is it did better than expected at the box office, and now David Gordon Green and Danny McBride and Jamie Lee Curtis are making two more Halloweens as a follow-up to this film, and those films are in production right now. Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Halloween Kills will be out in theaters in October 2020, and Halloween Ends will be in, in theaters October 2021. So, some more Halloween to look forward to. The runner-up in the number two spot is Halloween H2O 20 Years Later. So, this film follows the original timeline in the sister trilogy of the Halloween films, which includes John Carpenter's Halloween and Halloween 2. This is a direct sequel to the first two films. It completely ignores Halloween 4, Halloween 5, and Halloween 6. The music and score in this film is awesome and is done by John Altman, John Carpenter, with a few pieces in there by Marco Beltrami. This movie takes place 20 years after the first film. Jamie Lee Curtis returns as Laurie Strode. This film was directed by Steve Miner, who also directed Friday the 13th Part 2 and Friday the 13th Part 3. The film is written by Robert Zappia and Matt Greenberg. This film's central theme is basically fear. Laurie Strode is in hiding. She is running from her past and scared that the past is going to come back to haunt her. So she is running for her life. She's faked her death, changed her name, and moved away from Haddonfield and is a functioning alcoholic. This film was made as a way to honor the first film, plus Jamie Lee Curtis is the one who thought it was time to do another one. This film is very, very tight. It's edgy, nail-biting, scary, bloody, and just all around a wonderful film in the Halloween saga. This is my second favorite in the entire series, as you can tell since it's in the number two spot. However, there is one gripe I have about the film. That is, I wish it would have shown at least one or two more shots of the Halloween festivities, such as like kids and children dressed up, trick-or-treating in town or at the school at night. They do show some children in costume in town, but that's during the daytime, and that's uh, that's about all we get of that. So I, I kind of wish we would have had just a little bit more of kind of like the Halloween festivities uh, aura about it. Um, but that's my only gripe about the film. I thought all the actors um, were real good. <laughs> the one thing that does kind of get on my nerves a little bit is uh, the kid who plays uh, John Tate, Jamie Lee Curtis's, or Laurie Strode's son, uh, his real name is Josh Hartnett. His hair throughout the whole film is just sticking up like he just got out of bed and, uh, and he didn't even try to comb it, which he probably didn't. Every, every time I just want to jump through the screen and like take a hairbrush and brush his hair down or like, dude, you know, do something with your hair. Either shave it off or, or something, please. <laughs> it just drives me nuts. But other than that, I thought everyone uh, did a great job in this film. I love that they brought uh, Nancy Stevens back as uh, Nurse Marion Chambers or Whittington, as she's known in this film. I like how they kind of made a reference to Jason uh, with the kid who was wearing the hockey mask. Um, that's actually... Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who is a pretty serious actor now and who we all know from all sorts of different movies, uh, such as Inception, The Dark Knight Rises, 
just some other films like that. He was also uh, the main kid in uh, Angels in the Outfield. LL Cool J was one of the best things about this film, him and uh, Janet Leigh, who, those of you who don't know who Janet Leigh is, uh, she was in Psycho. She was the one who got killed in the shower during that famous shower scene, and that's actually Jamie Lee Curtis's mother. How cool is that? But yeah, this this film is just rock solid. It's a great horror film. It's It's got great horror and action sequences too, so I would say it's a horror thriller action movie. So yeah, it's, it, it's a great film, and I, I love every minute of it. Halloween H2O is at my number two and the runner-up. My absolute number one best and favorite movie of the franchise gets the number one spot. And that is, of course, yep, you guessed it, John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978. Of course, like I said, this film was directed by John Carpenter and was written and produced by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. This film stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, PJ Souls, Nancy Loomis, Nancy Stevens, Kyle Richards, Brian Andrews, Charles Cyphers and Nick Castle, and a few others. This, in my mind, is a flawless film. The story is solid. The characters are well, bit, well built and well fleshed out. We care about these characters. We care about the story. We're in, we're invested in it from moment one. This, this is a story of events that could take place anywhere, and this film changed the face of horror and took it in a brand new direction, which was the horror slasher genre. Um, it's just, this film is just so tight. It's just absolutely amazing. I have no complaints whatsoever about this film. In fact, it's like uh, the film Aliens. And what I mean by that is whenever I don't know what to watch or there's nothing on television or I'm just not in the mood to watch anything and I just need something for noise, um, then I usually go for one of my defaults. And John Carpenter's Halloween is one of my default movies, as is Aliens and Halloween H2O. So I have a few more default films uh, that I go to as well, but these are probably the top three. I mean, I, I, I can watch John Carpenter's Halloween anytime or Halloween H2O. Uh, those films are just, they're, they're well done, and they're almost flawless. In fact, this one is flawless, in my opinion. Um, but other than that, this one is the best of the series, and it gets my number one top spot. So uh, this is my list, guys, and this is how I rank the films. Um, 
tell me if this is yours or uh, message me in the comments and show and type out and show me your your ranking, how you rank these films. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it, and um, I will be doing more videos since it is October. Uh, most of it will be in the horror genre to celebrate uh, the night of Halloween, October 31st, 2019. Thank you so much for watching. I bid you all a good night. God bless. I love you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.